I need to get this off of my chest. Some of you may question the paranormal, and others may welcome it. I'm writing this simply because the thoughts and memories of what happened replay in my mind in high definition, and they torment my very being to the core. I'd like to call myself a good person, but putting this all into words has me thinking that I need to change, not only for myself, but for those who may want to get close to me. Whether you want to believe this is up to you. My friends, Ali, Daniel, and I knew a girl from elementary to high school that died. It was well before the quarantine, and we were still in high school, about to graduate, actually. Her name was Haley, and her and her family were murdered in a home invasion gone to hell. They were found in their home because of a house call from a worried teacher since Haley stopped going to school for a full week with no word from the parents. They had stab wounds across their bodies and Haley's body showed signs of forced entry, along with stab wounds in the stomach and her face, leaving the jaw mangled. The reason I know the gruesome details is because my father was the medical examiner. I didn't see the bodies, of course. Despite being into horror and in high school, the thought of it freaked me out. My parents knew her parents fairly well, and the girl, Haley, and I were actually buddies in elementary. I didn't really want to know, but I was still curious, so after he got back home, I asked about it anyway. Son, it's worse than one of your video games, my father said. Can I see anyway? I asked. He refused to show me, but he explained what happened. Looking back now, I wish he hadn't, and I should have just left it alone after that. Left her in peace. They didn't have relatives close enough to travel to the police station in town, and the police began asking the students and parents if anyone knew her and if anyone was close to them. The town was sickened from this, but it was also sad, not only because their funeral had maybe nine or ten people there in total, but because up until she died, no one really cared about her. Haley was one of those girls who would get flushed and come off as angry when you would make eye contact with her or try to strike up a conversation. I just figured that was her defense mechanism from social anxiety. She wore heavy metal band t-shirts and basically all black clothing, only having a select few friends and a teacher who took a liking to her. This caused a many number of students to make fun of her and just flat out ignore her for a while. I, among the few, weren't one of these students. At least, not yet. Then, the worst thing possible for that poor family happened. It actually really hit me, to be frank. Despite her attitude, she was a cute, innocent girl, and her parents were sweet. A month passed, and rumors began to spread. Students would walk by the lonely house blocked off with police tape and spoke of movement inside. Other rumors claimed times where students would see Haley staring out of her window with her once long black hair, now ragged across her stabbed and bloody ghostly face. I live in a small town, so word would get around and jokes formed. Also, some students would go up to the door and knock, but only to have nothing happen. Other, more superstitious students would say that she was there, still in that house, only because she was holding on to something in the living world and needed to be set free. In the back of my mind, I thought of myself. After I showed my initial interest in her in elementary and later in middle school, she seemed pretty infatuated with me, and it kind of got weird. I was young, so I wasn't used to girls yet, which is another reason that weirdness caused me to kind of forget. But we did actually kiss in middle school, and I sort of remember going to her house once in high school, though I can't really be too sure. 
I was drinking kind of frequently around this time, so... Yeah. It was just one of those things that happens when you're young, and it was around this time when I started being an angsty teen. In any case, after that I never pursued her, and all of that just became memories. Foggy ones, at best. I would catch her watching me from a corner on the way home from school by some streets. Other times she would be just staring at me and smiling from across the cafeteria or the halls. There was also a big tree on the edge of her school's property that she carved our initials together with a knife. Thinking about this kind of gave me the creeps. I remember this happening at the end of middle school. I was one of those kids who would run from problems rather than confront them head on, so I just ignored her and went on with my life after that. I still thought about it though. What if? Only a couple of weeks later they found the killer. I saw a picture of him and he looked flat out insane. I hated him. It was a strand of hair found at the crime scene that led to his arrest and eventual death sentence. This made the whole town buzz cheerfully for a short burst. Then a dare was born. After school was out, Allie, Daniel, and I were inseparable. My parents were divorced and I would usually be at my dad's because he basically let me do whatever the fuck I wanted. Those two were in my room most of the summer, watching anime, telling wild stories, playing with our pellet guns in the woods, going on YouTube, and getting drunk and high. It was fun. I wish some of those moments never ended. But one night, when those two were over, they brought something up that nearly made me quiver. Helena Jackson, you remember her, right? Yeah, she comes from a family of psychics or gypsies or something. And she said on the way home from a shop she goes to, she passed the Moore house and she saw Haley in the doorway with the door open. She said she was crying and was holding a journal in her hand. Allie said, now talking with her hands, almost spilling her mixed drink into some Red Bull on my desk. No way, I muttered. Daniel began to speak. Dude, I believe her. Helena, she once touched my hand and looked at my palm saying that I was going to get something I always wanted that day, and BOOM! My collector's edition sword set came in the mail that was two weeks overdue. Haley is still roaming in that house. Kind of feel for her, you know? I mean, they caught the killer, but maybe she- I cut him off. You guys seriously believe in all that horse shit? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. What an asshole. I know. It was mean of me to say. But you have to look at it from my perspective. I was actually scared shitless and I wanted them to drop it. Also, we were drinking vodka that night, so I was pretty buzzed and angry. Look, there's no such th things going on in this shit town. It's just a bunch of kids being idiots. I said firmly with a hiccup, I'm sure. Oh, Ellie exclaimed, hands flailing up and down. Okay, so that makes me an idiot for believing. Yeah, me too, Daniel joined in. Okay, yeah, gang up on me and my Ellie cut me off. How about this tough guy? How about you go in the house and prove to us that there's no such things as ghosts and that Haley isn't <coughs> after something? They found the killer, and people are still seeing her in there. Something is still binding her to this world. I dare you. Ellie, my phone's charging over there. What time is it? Daniel asked. She fumbled her phone out of her pocket. Uh, oh, um, it's 1.48 a.m. Daniel grinned up at me. Perfect. He said, flashing a mischievous grin on his face. I believe the lady has dared you, Adam. Time to man up. We go tonight. I was so pissed now, but I wasn't showing it. If you don't, if you don't do this dare, we will never speak to you again for calling us idiots. You hear me? Allie said. Oh, come on, be a little less. No, I dared him. What do you say, tough guy? Hmm? They both turned their attention to me. Fine. I'll do it. We packed a bag with a flashlight, a couple of granola bars, my pocket knife just in case, and the vodka, and made our way to the Moore house. The wind was really strong that night, and it was a crescent moon. 
When we arrived, a pit in my stomach formed and I was getting cold feet. I took another shot of vodka and grimaced. Okay, Adam, we're here. <gasps> Wait. She abruptly stopped moving. Do you hear that? Daniel and I looked at each other with an eyebrow raised. Hear what? I asked. It's Haley. I can hear her calling your name. She teased. Oh, shut the fuck up. Give me that flashlight. I snapped it out of her hand and gave Daniel the bottle of booze. I'm going in, all right. Just stay here and I'll be back in a minute. Uh oh Ellie did her arm flailing again. You're staying in there for ten minutes. I'll start a stopwatch on my phone once you get in. Look for things that might mean a lot to her. She will come. My legs buckled a bit. Why did I even agree to this? I frowned and walked by them, making my way into their house. Twisting the knob, the deadbolt was locked. So I started fumbling with the knob and shaking the door a little from its frame and trying to force my way in. Then I heard a click, and the door was open. Too drunk to care, I still walked through, sort of intrigued by the door opening. I think me being buzzed had something to do with that, because looking back, I should have noped the fuck out of there right then. Moving the police tape out of my way, I looked back at my two knuckleheads, and they just stood there smiling and motioned for me to go in further. I sighed and walked in shutting the door behind me. To say that it looked gloomy in there was an understatement. Furniture was moved around and the table was flipped over showing signs of a struggle. The strong winds made the windows groan and the house settle, and there was a chemical smell in the air. I stood there in the front room for a good few minutes, second-guessing this, and almost opened the door and left, but I said to myself, it's only a dare. After shuffling through old photos I found and gazing at random things, I had a thought cross through my mind in that dusty, forgotten home. What's in Haley's room? My mind was suddenly clear as if that thought washed over all things in my life. I found her room, opened the door, and immediately began looking through her things. I couldn't really find anything that might activate some bizarre and supernatural occurrence. Just some old stuffed animals, posters, school supplies, a laptop, and just a collection of punk rock and girly things. Coming up with nothing, I decided to peek under her bed, and that's when I found it. The diary. I opened it and began reading, filling me with piercing guilt and sadness, like I found a piece of Haley that no one would ever know about. Flipping through page after page, I came across something that wiped away that and filled me with absolute dread. I should have guessed it, but... But there were entries about me. I don't remember every single thing it said, but... To sum it up, she was in love with me. She spoke about how I was perfect in her eyes, how I would make her day so much better even though she hated her life and everyone else around her, how I was the only thing that made her get up in the morning just to see me smile and laugh with my friends. Only she wished that I could acknowledge her more and not think of her as just a stupid middle school kiss. After that page, the journal became dark, and after reading it further, I have, I have something to tell you that I didn't mention before. Just four months ago, I got drunk one night after I had gotten rejected at a party. I had Haley's number and I texted her asking if I could come over. She immediately said yes and told me her parents just so happened to be out of town. Needless to say, we hooked up and I took her virginity. I remember the morning being very awkward for me, because I was drunk as all hell when I rode my bike over there. I hadn't said anything about it before because... Well, because I'm a fucking idiot and just left that detail out. The thing was, she wrote in the journal that she had a part of me inside of her, and wrote it with sloppy handwriting. 
She knew she couldn't say anything to anyone, not even me. That's just how she was. The quiet one. The one everyone made fun of. She wrote that too. That she wanted to tell me and her parents, but that she knew there was only one solution to solve the problem. She then spoke about wanting to run away and never look back. How she wished she could make me see how much she loved me, and it would give her the hope to never give up. And how she felt empty. How I was the only thing that mattered to her now. The final entry read, No one would give a fuck anyway. Maybe I should just die with it. And now she is dead. I began to cry, but they were not only tears of sadness, it was also anger. I cursed and kicked things with the journal in my hand. I yelled and cursed some more, wishing I had known. Maybe that would change how I felt about her. I let all of my emotions out right then, because I did something that I regret to this day. Fucking bullshit! I cursed once more, then ripped the pages out and tore them to pieces. <laughs> I'm fucking out of here. This isn't funny anymore. I made my way back to the door and stopped dead in my tracks. Directly in front of me, I could hear muffled crying. I tried to squint my eyes to see who was in front of me. Did Allie come in and see what I did? Oh shit, I, I was just... I then stopped when I noticed something. Something wrong. It wasn't Allie standing there, doubled over with her hands to her face crying. It was her. Hey, Haley. She stopped crying, stood upright. I heard bones crack and a sort of liquid dripping. I looked at the nightgown she wore on the night I came over, and there was blood stained in between her legs and it was dripping at her feet. I looked up at her long hair parted slightly revealing her face's right side. I then heard a sickening plop splash to her feet. Before I could even react, she screamed at me, and her dead white eye stared at me with anger. Her mouth was gaped open, sickeningly stretched, filled with teeth, blood, and what I could only guess were pages from her diary. I screamed in absolute horror and ran to the window in her room, quickly unlocking it and opened it to push myself through. I opened the screen and half of my body was through. My foot then got stuck and I looked back to try and get it out when I saw her dead hand grabbing it. I looked at her face again, and her eye was pouring blood. She wouldn't stop screaming and crying, gripping my leg. I love you! Stay with us! Her screaming filled my ears with barbed wire. I looked away as two shapes were making their way towards me in the dark. Allie and Daniel came to my aid and forced me out. We all stumbled to the ground and looked at the window. She was gone. We saw a neighbor come out of their house and threatened to call the police if we didn't leave. So we did just that. Uh, what the hell happened in there? Daniel asked with worried eyes. I explained to them that I wanted to get the fuck out of there and I hoped they were happy. They didn't ask any questions the whole way back. After I calmed down, I told them what happened, and they seemed worried. I didn't tell anyone we hooked up, but I told them then. They didn't understand the gravity of the situation and thought it was just a little crush she had on me. But this was a deep passion she carried in her, both metaphorically and literally. And I felt like a total piece of shit. Allie punched me pretty hard in the arm that night for not telling anyone and basically being a drunk, doing what I did. I can't blame her. She doesn't talk to me anymore, and Daniel is about to move out of state. Good. Good for them. At least they can get out of this town before another group of idiots like us do some shit to make bad things happen. And they don't need a friend like me anyways. So yeah... The rumors were true. Students actually were seeing her in that house. And there actually is something that binds her to the living world. It's me. 
and our baby that she aborted herself. <laughs> 